Let's take a look at this wonderful quantity we call the mole today. So let's start with the mole. I've drawn a nucleon here. A nucleon is either a neutron or a proton. To about three significant digits, the mass of a neutron and a proton is the same. And they're both found within the nucleus. And in fact, it, in more advanced physics, it turns out that the protons and neutrons can't be distinguished from each other inside the nucleus. So we have a single name for protons and neutrons. We call them nucleons. And all the mass in the visible universe is really coming from, essentially, the protons and neutrons. Because the electrons have one two thousandth the mass of one of these nucleons. So the mass of one of these nucleons is about 1.67 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. Now we're going to take a large number of those nucleons, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I didn't draw them all here. I'll let you draw the rest of those as homework. Now what is the mass of all those nucleons? Well we'd have to take the number of nucleons and multiply it by the mass per nucleon and we'll get a mass here of one gram. So if we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd nucleons, then we get a mass of one gram. This number here has a special name. It's called Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant. And we usually give it the symbol Na. So Na is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Well, this Avogadro's number is just a number in the same way that, say, a dozen is a number. A dozen is the number 12. So we can talk about 12 eggs or a dozen eggs, but it doesn't always have to refer to eggs. We could also talk about the dirty dozen, a dozen soldiers, as in the movie The Dirty Dozen. And I think we're all very comfortable in dealing with math, dealing with dozens. And we should be just as comfortable in dealing with math that concerns Avogadro's number, even though it's a much bigger number. So this word mole, it's not about fuzzy little animals or shady characters. It's coming from the word molecule. And the mole is a certain number of molecules. We call that number Avogadro's number. And it's equal to this 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now when we have molecules, there's a certain number of nucleons inside that molecule. So for instance, with a water molecule, You've got two hydrogens and one oxygen bonded together. Now inside a hydrogen nucleus is simply a proton, a single proton. So the number of nucleons is going to be two protons coming from the hydrogen plus another eight protons and another eight neutrons coming from the oxygen atoms. And that means you're going to get a grand total of 18 nucleons in every molecule of water. And we were saying before that if you've got Avogadro's number, that is a mole of nucleons, that has a mass of one gram. So the mass, if you've got a whole mole of molecules, will equal the mass number. But we'd write it in units of grams. So one mole of H2O has a mass of 18 grams. That is to say, if we have a molecular mass of 18 nucleons, then we're going to have a molar mass of 18 grams. And now I have a few IB questions for you. This first one here, I never taught my students about the mole being defined in terms of carbon-12. Turns out it's true. Many of my students, though, did get this question right. So see if you can kind of work out the reasoning that they used to get this correct. The first thing that they probably did was to say, well, there's no way you can define a mole in terms of mass, and therefore I should eliminate answers A and C. The mole is defined in terms of a certain number of particles. And so we're looking for that phrase number of. And so B and D are both good. 
Now, I d kind of don't like this phrase, elementary entities, because it seems kind of vague to me. But I think what the IB is getting at is that we could be talking about atoms, such as in the case of carbon-12, or we could ta be talking about molecules in the case of water. So the elementary entities would refer to either atoms or to molecules. Answer D here is, th this is true. The number of nuclei would equal the number of, of atoms. Atoms would be your smallest entity for carbon. But it really doesn't lend itself to the more general definition. And that's why the IB put down B here as the more general definition. So we'd have to have Avogadro's number of carbon atoms if we had a sample that was 12 grams. Because carbon-12, of course, has 12 nucleons in one atom. Here's a second question. What I'd like you to do, pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So the first thing you want to realize is that silicon-28, so if we're talking silicon-28, then one mole would have a mass of 28 grams. So if you've only got 14 grams here, then you've only got 0 0.5 moles. Now if we considered carbon, carbon-12, a full mole would be equal to 12 grams. And we want it to have exactly the same number of particles, the same number of atoms, and therefore we would like to have 0 0.5 moles of carbon-12 so that we've got the same number of atoms. And that means we're going to have to have half of 12 grams, or 6 grams, and the correct answer here is A. Okay, one last IB multiple choice question. What I'd like you to do is to pause the video, try it for yourself, and then come back for the answer. Now, don't be fooled in this question by this term, relative atomic mass. An example of a relative atomic mass would be the mass number like we've always been using. So the, that doesn't make any change to the problem. So the first thing you want to consider is if we have 6 grams of carbon, well a, a full mole would be 12 grams. So of course 6 grams is going to be half of a mole. Now we want to have half of that number of atoms. In other words, we want to end up with a quarter of a mole and it's going to be of oxygen 16. Now a quarter of a mole of oxygen 16, of course one mole would be 16 grams, so a quarter of a mole would be 4 grams. And that would be your correct answer is C, right here. And I have one last problem solving example for you here. I'm going to treat it like a unit conversion problem. There's different ways of looking at it, but I find looking at it as a unit conversion can be very effective. So it would be a good idea to pause the video now and try this question and then come back for the answer. Okay, so here's our first conversion factor right here. We know that 8.96 grams is worth one centimeter cubed of copper. This here is also a conversion factor. 63.5 grams is worth one mole. And our other conversion factor would be Avogadro's number. That is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Well, atoms, in this case, it might be molecules in another problem. So that's worth one mole. So let's, the problem that we're trying to do is find the mass of an atom of copper. So we're really looking for grams per atom. So first thing I know is that, let's say I write down 63.5 grams per mole, which would be great because I'd have grams in the top already, but I've got moles in the bottom. I don't want moles in the bottom. I want atoms in the bottom. So let me get rid of those moles and go to atoms using this second conversion factor. I'll have moles in the top, atoms in the bottom, and there are Avogadro's number of atoms in a mole. And if we multiply that out, notice that we are canceling out the moles. We are getting grams per atom. And when we do the multiplication there, which is really division, 63.5 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, we get an answer of 1.05 times 10 
to the minus 22 grams per atom. And always check on these problems whether your answer is reasonable. For instance, if you were to get a positive 22 here, that would be a very, very heavy atom. Okay, let's try the second problem. I've just written down my conversion factors again. This is Avogadro's number. Uh, this was the molar mass. This was the density. And this is from part A. That's what I learned in part A, that 1.05 times 10 to the minus 22 grams is equal to one atom of copper. So what I want to do now is find the number of copper atoms. So I want to find out atoms in a meter cubed. Okay, so, well, I've got atoms right here. I can say that one atom is worth 1.05 times 10 to the minus 22 grams. Secondly, I don't like the grams, so I'm going to try to go from grams into volume units, and here's grams and volumes units. I can say that 8.96 grams is worth one centimeter cubed. And then, so my grams canceled out. I'm in atoms per centimeter cubed, so I just need to do a last conversion where I get rid of the centimeters cubed and I go to meters cubed. Now, in a volume conversion, I can write down certainly that 100 centimeters is worth one meter. And then if I cube both sides of that equation, I'll get the conversion I want. One meter cubed is 100 cubed, one zero 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 zero. In other words, one million. There's a million centimeters cubed in a meter cubed. So now if I take 1 divided by 1.05 times 10 to the minus 2, multiply by 8.96, and then multiply by a million, I'll get an answer there of 8.5 times 10 to the 28th atoms in a meter cubed. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.